So what did we do two days ago? Adding, Adding and subtracting, right? You guys were okay with that, yes? Yeah. What did we do yesterday? Multiplying. Multiplying. How did you feel about that? Okay, so today and tomorrow we're doing division. Since we're doing it for two days, does that mean it's hard? Yes. No, it means there's two ways to do division, and I want to spend a day on each way. Okay? If there's an easier way and a hard way, which way do you think? Which one do you think? Listen to the question. That's all which one easy. Which one do you think I'm going to teach you first? The harder way. The harder way, right? Because then we can work on the hard way. We have a whole day to work on it. Then you have tomorrow to ask questions if you need to. And then I can teach you the easy way real quick. Okay? Now, last period, after I got all the way done with the lesson and they got started on their work, uh, they respectfully argued with me. They're like, this is not hard. I said, I never said it was hard. I said it was harder than tomorrow. <laughs> then they felt pretty excited about tomorrow. <coughs> so they got through it pretty quick. Right? They got, I think almost all of them got done with the six problems of, of homework before they left. And then they were excited for tomorrow because they know if they understood today, then tomorrow's going to be cake. Yes? Okay? I'm not saying that's going to be true for you. I'm saying that was true for last period, but I'm giving you an example of what just happened. Okay? So, I want to start with this problem right here. Is this a polynomial? No. Well, there's no variables involved, are there? Okay? So, but what is it? It is long division, right? So going through this problem, I think it's going to help us with our thought process for what we're going to need for polynomial long division, okay? So first of all, I'm going to draw my vinculum. That actually has a name, and it's called a vinculum, V-I-N-C-U-L-U-M, just in case you're curious, okay? It's called a vinculum. What goes on the outside of the vinculum? And what goes on the inside of the vinculum? Okay. So how do I start this problem? Don't tell me like an answer or anything like that. I want the thought process of how to start this problem. What you got? Um, so first you're going to see if A can go into 3. So first we're going to see if A goes into 3. You're going to realize, oh no, that doesn't. Oh no, so it doesn't. Then you go over to 4 and you makes 34, and you see how many times 8 can go in 34, which is 4 times 8 can go in. Okay, 34. so stop right there. Stop right there, please. Thank you. How many times does 8 go into 34? 4. 4, right? That would be 32, right? Where do I put that 4? Above the second four. Now, is there an exact place you have to put it? There's not. Is there a good idea of where to put it? Yes. And that place is above that 4. Not because they're both fours, but because that's the end of the number that I divided eight into, right? Now what do I do? You put 32 underneath 34. How did I get 32? By eight times, times four. four. No, how many times? Four times eight, right? Once I write the number up here, I multiply. Four times eight, and what do I get? 32. 32. And then I, so, hold, time out, time out. You're going too fast for me. Fast. Subtract, <coughs> okay? For the record, when I subtract, I always subtract in a different color. You guys know I'm a visual person, right? I always subtract in a different color because then I know I subtracted. It really doesn't that make, make that much of a difference in this kind of problem, but later it will. Okay? Now I actually subtract. What's 34 minus 32? 2. two. After I write down the 2, what do I do next? I drag down the 7. Okay? And now I start over, right? I say, how many times does 8 go into 27? Three. Three times. And where do I write that 3? Above the 7. Above the 7. And then what do I do? 3 times 8. I multiply, right? 3 times 8, which is? 24. 24. And then I subtract. What is 27 minus 24? 3. And now? down the two. And now I start over. How many times does 8 go into 32? Four. Four. And then what do I do with the 4? Multiply by 8 and I get 32. And then 
I subtract, 32 minus 32 is? Zero. zero. So 8 goes into 3,472 434 times. Does that make sense? This time, this example right here, there's no remainder. But if this was like a 5, for instance, if I actually got a remainder of 5, I would actually put 5 over 8, because 8 was what I originally divided by, right? Does everybody understand about that? Okay. Now, that's the thought process. I, I tried to go slow so you could see what our thought process was as I went through this problem. That's our thought process when we have problems that look like this. Okay, so write this problem down. I'll let you get it in your notes before I start. So x squared plus 5x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my vinculum. What goes on the outside of the vinculum? Oh. X minus 1, because that is what I'm dividing by. What goes on the inside of the vinculum? X squared plus 5x <coughs> minus 1. Very good, because that's what I'm dividing into, right? Okay, so here's the difference. You know, on this problem right here, we had to think about, okay, does 8 go into 3? No, does 8 go into, I have to figure out. There's nothing to figure out here. I just look at the first term and the first term. That's all I look at. Yesterday, when we talked about multiplying like bases, what did we do with the exponents? We added them, right? Today, we're going to divide like bases. What should we do with the exponents? Subtract. Okay? So I'm saying, what is x squared divided by x? What is x squared divided by x? 2 minus 1. 3. Try again. Oh, 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So I just get x. Now, is there an exact place I have to put the x? No. But is there a good idea where I should put the x? Above the like term, right? So above the 5x <coughs> is where I'm going to put that x. Thinking about what I did now on this problem, what should I do with this x? Uh, Multiply, right? What's x times x? x, x squared. squared. What is x times negative 1? Negative 1x. Negative 1x. Oh, I see. Now, what did I do on this problem? I subtracted, right? Now, do you see, oh, wait a second, what's going to happen here? So that's going to I'm subtracting out. a negative. No good. What's Don't happening? What happens when I subtract a negative? A yeah. So even though I said subtract, do you see why I wrote that? Subtracting a negative is adding, isn't it? Okay. So what's x squared and negative x squared? <clears throat> so this is something really, really important that you need to know. Okay. If you get something else here than zero, you did something wrong. Because the whole idea is to get zero right here. Does that make sense? Now the next term, 5x and 1x. 6x. What do you think I do now? Absolutely. I need to bring down that negative 1. And now I just start over. What is 6x divided by x? 6, right? So I'm going to put it above the term that it's like, which is the 1. So what is 6 times x? And what is 6 times negative 1? Negative 6. And now I subtract, subtract, subtract. What is 6x minus 6x? Again, that's supposed to be a 0, isn't it? Okay, and then what's negative 1 and positive 6? 5. Now what? Do I start again? Can I do 5 divided by x? 5 is not divisible by x, is it? Don't, don't I also know I'm already done? Because is there any more spaces at the top? There's not any more spaces. There are not any more terms to write above. So what is this then? That is my remainder. 
So I need you to know how to write the answer though, okay? The answer is what I got up here at top, x plus six, but because I have a remainder this time, I have plus my remainder divided by what I was originally dividing by. So that's the answer. That is my answer right there. Any questions about that? How do you feel about that? Okay, let's do another one then. You knew it was going to be harder, didn't you? Right? You knew it. That's all right. So 3x to the third plus 5x squared minus 11x plus 3 divided by x plus 3. So I'm going to draw my <coughs> vinculum. What goes on the outside of my vinculum? x plus 3. What goes on the inside of my vinculum? Now that I have everything written where I need to, now I start. Divide the first term on the inside by the first term on the outside. Only first, only first. What is 3x to the third divided by x? We can write it if we need to. 3x to the third divided by x. Remember this is x to the first. 3x squared, that's exactly right. And where should I write that 3x squared? above the 5x squared, right? So 3x squared. Now what do I do with this 3x squared? Uh, I multiply. 3x squared times x? 3x squared. 3x squared times 3? 9x squared. <coughs> now what? Subtract. Subtract. Subtract, subtract. Do you see why I do my subtraction into different color? Yes. Because there's already signs there. I I may not remember if I've subtracted, especially if like I'm working on a problem and somebody like a table mate asks for help. I go to help them. I come back and like, uh, did I subtract or not? Right. If I put the if I put the subtraction in a different color, that helps out. Does that make sense? Okay. Three x cubed minus three x uh, cubed. Oops. Sorry about that. Cubed. That's zero, right? Yeah. What about 5x squared and negative 9x squared? Negative 3x? Almost. Negative 4. Negative 4x squared. Now what? Bring down. Watch what I'm going to bring down. I'm just going to bring down the rest. Okay? Is that required? No? Sometimes it's important though. If you'll wait a couple of examples, you'll see why it's important. Is that okay? All right. Now I start again. What's negative 4x squared divided by x? Negative 4x squared divided by x. Negative 4x. Where should I put that? Very good. What do I do with negative 4x? I multiply. What's negative 4x times x? Very good. What's negative 4x times 3? How about negative 12x? Are you okay with that? Right. I still multiply the 4 and the 3. That's 12. And then I have the x, right? I guess negative 4, so it would be negative 12. And now what? Subtract. Negative 4x squared and 4x squared. Zero, just exactly like it should be, right? 11 x, negative 11x and 12x. Plus 3. Start again. x divided by x. x divided by x. No, it's not zero. What's anything divided by itself, guys? One, right? It's a one, okay? So it's just 1. So it's going to go above the 3. Now I multiply 1 times x. 
and 1 times 3. And now I subtract. So what does that mean? My remainder is 0. That means this x plus 3 divides evenly into this. Just like this one divided evenly into this, there was no remainder. The same way here, this divides evenly into this polynomial. This binomial divides evenly into this polynomial. Okay? Any questions about that? We good so far? Now I have to try to trick you. Are you ready? At least I'm telling you about it beforehand though, right? So I'm going to draw my vinculum. First of all, I've got x cubed plus 1 divided by x minus 1. So it goes outside the vinculum. x minus 1, very good. For the record, here's where the trick is. What goes inside the vinculum? x cubed. Something's missing. What should come next? If I start with x cubed, what should come next? x squared. I have to have everything represented underneath the vinculum. Everything. Because there's not one, I have to put one there. What's the only thing I'm allowed to add a, to a problem that doesn't change its value? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to add a 0x squared. Do you see how that that's going to be a placeholder for an x squared? Okay. And then plus 1? Yeah. No? No? I need an x, don't I? So plus 0x. And now plus 1? Yeah. Because think about it. If I start with the next to the third, what has to be next? squared what has to be next to the first and then the constant right the one without the x does that make sense why it has to all be there for the record it may or may not yet okay it will in just a second though all right right now what i need you to understand is under the vinculum if you start with an x to the third every variable underneath has to be represented and a constant also has to be represented okay <clears throat> so let's start First term, first term. What is x cubed divided by x? What's x cubed divided by x? x squared, right? Huh. If I wouldn't have put that in, where would I have put my x squared? Oh. So, x squared. Now what do I do? Multiply. What's x squared times x? What's x squared times negative 1? Oh, another O, right? Because if I, because that gives me negative x squared, and if I wouldn't have written this, where would I put my negative x squared? Huh. Now what? Subtract. This is <coughs> 0. What is this? 0x squared plus x squared. Yeah, x squared. 1x squared. Are we happy to put the 1? Do we have to put the 1? No, but can we if we want? Yes. Now what should I do? Bring down the rest, okay. 0x plus 1. Now I start over. x squared divided by x. x squared divided by x is x, right? So where is that going to go? Oh, if I hadn't added it, where would it go, right? So plus x. Now what do I do with this x? Multiply. x times x. x squared. x times negative 1. Negative 1x. One. Negative one and now I subtract. x squared minus x squared. 0, 0x zero and 1x, 1x plus 1. I'm going to bring down my 1. Now I start over. 
x divided by x. That is 1. Good. Okay, where does that go? Above the 1. What is 1 times x? x. And what is 1 times negative 1? Negative 1. And now, subtract x minus x, 0, 1, and 1, 2. Does this divide evenly into this? No, because there's a remainder. So when I go to write my answer, I have x squared plus x plus 1 plus my remainder, perfect, over what I divided by. Any questions? Okay. One last example. You good with that? So 2x to the fifth minus 3, sorry, 2y to the fifth minus 2y to the fourth minus y squared plus y plus 4 divided by y squared plus 1. But we need a cube. Oh, we do. Good job. We do need a cubed when I write this in my vinculum, don't we? I'm going to go ahead and write my vinculum. On the outside is y squared plus 1, and on the inside is 2y to the 5th minus 3y to the 4th. This is where you want to put that one in, isn't it? 0y to the 3rd, and then minus y squared plus y plus 4. Now, does anybody want to argue with me about anything right here? They didn't argue with me so much last period, it's just ask me a question. Because we made sure to put that in there, didn't we? Don't we need the, just the y? Do we need a y? Yes. Guys, the only thing we need placeholders for are under the vinculum. Okay. okay. If there's one missing in what we're dividing by, we do not need to add anything. You can if you want, but it's not required. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's do this one. 2y to the fifth divided by y squared. 2y to the fifth divided by y squared. That's going to be y to the third for sure, right? But I still have my 2, so it's going to be 2y to the third. Very good. What do I do with the 2y to the third? Multiply. So 2y to the third times y squared? 2y to the fifth. And 2y to the third times 1? 2y to the third. Now look, I've got to put it under what it's like. So it goes over here, right? So there's just a space there? It's just a space right now, right? I'm going to bring it down in a second, but right now it's just a space, and it, that needs to be okay with you that it's a space. Can you put in a 0y to the 4th if you want? Yeah. yeah, you haven't changed anything, but you don't need to. It's not necessary. Does that make sense? And now we subtract. 2y to the 5th minus 2y to the 5th. Now I have to do something with this. Now is when I have negative 3y to the 4th. I don't combine it with anything, so it's still just negative 3y to the 4th, right? Y to the 0 y to the 3rd and negative 2 y to the 3rd. Very good. Minus y squared plus y plus 4. How easy is it going to be for you to miss a sign right here? So just focus, okay? Pay attention when you're bringing the, your stuff down. Now we start over. Negative 3y to the 4th divided by y squared. Yeah, 4 minus 2 is 2, so negative 3y squared. Negative 3y squared. Now I multiply, right? Negative 3y squared times y squared. And negative 3y squared times 1. 
Yeah, make sure you're putting it underneath the term that it's like. And now I subtract, right? Now, it, it turns out that I'm adding both terms because they were already negative, so subtracting a negative is adding, isn't it? So negative 3y to the 4th plus 3y to the 4th? Zero. Zero. I do have this negative 2y to the 3rd, and then I have plus 2y to the 2nd. The second. Very good. Then I have my plus y, and I have my plus 4. How many times, can you tell me right now, how many more times am I going to divide? Three. Two, right? Because I have two spaces right up here, right? Okay. Um, negative 2y to the third divided by y squared. Negative 2y, very good. Now multiply. Negative 2y times y squared. And negative 2y times 1. <coughs> um, it's still negative, but that's okay. Negative 2 and positive 1, okay? I'm going to scoot it up just a little bit so you can see what I'm writing. Now I subtract. Again, in this case, I'm end up adding both of them because it's a subtracting the negative, right? Negative 2y to the third plus 2y to the third? Zero. Zero. Then I have my 2y squared, and then I have 3y plus 4. Very good. 2y squared divided by y squared. You sure? One. Sorry, it's 2y squared divided by y squared. Anything divided by itself is 1. What's left? Just the 2. Yeah, very good. What's 2 times y squared? 2y squared. And what's 2 times 1? 2. So now I subtract. This is? 0. This is? 3y. Plus two. That's our remainder? It is. How do you know it's our remainder? There's a couple there's ways. No more spots. Yeah, there's no more spots at the top. And the other thing to think about is can you divide three y by y whoops. Three y by y squared? No. No, that'll leave a, a y in the denominator, won't it? That's not going to divide into it. So this is my remainder right here. So when I go to write my answer, I'm going to write it over here where I have room. I have 2y to the third minus 3y squared <coughs> minus 2y plus 2 plus 3y plus 2 over y squared plus 1. Very good. Very good. That's my answer. Does that make sense? How do you feel about this? Do you think it's really hard? So how do you feel about tomorrow then? If I'm telling you tomorrow is easier than this. Okay? Uh, where is your homework? Big ideas, right? So that's on your Chromebook. Um, anybody have any questions? Yeah, if you have some later, what do you do? You just ask, right? Okay.